Hello, this video discusses the concepts of potential or full employment output and also the output gap. Now, in your readings and lectures on macroeconomics, you most likely have run across the terms full employment output and also possibly potential output and the output gap. These are all related concepts. The purpose of this video is to help define and clarify the meanings of these terms. So let's start with a definition we're going to borrow from Greg Mankiw's great textbook that full employment output is also called the natural level of output. It is the level of output at which the economy's resources are fully employed or, more realistically, at which unemployment is at its natural rate. So potential output is simply another frequently used term for full employment output. These two terms may be used interchangeably. Another definition, the output gap, is the difference between the actual or observed level of output and potential or full employment output. And you can see that here, that total or observed output is equal to potential plus the gap. Now, more frequently, we measure the gap in terms of percent of potential output. So you can see these numbers here. The here we're measuring in dollars, billions of dollars. So uh, our total output is 16,320. Uh, our potential output is 16,000, actually 16 trillion, I should say, and our gap is $320 billion. But now let's measure the output gap in percent, and that's 2% of potential output. Now for a clarification. Full employment does not mean that 100% of the labor force is working. In a market economy at any time, there will be some people that will be unemployed, but they'll, they'll be looking for work they and their potential employers are seeking to find a good match for one another, a good mutual fit. That takes time. That's a costly process. The natural rate of unemployment is thus a constant fraction of the labor force that is searching for a job, even during normal times. While economists differ on exactly what the natural rate of an unemployment is, most would agree that historically this number has been somewhere between 4% and 6% of the labor force that is in the United States. In our examples, we'll assume that the natural rate of unemployment is 5%, or equivalently, the natural rate of employment is 95%, because if you're, not, if you're in the labor force and you're not employed, you're unemployed. So now let's think about the relationship between the business cycle and the employment of labor. So when we think about an upturn or an expansion, that's when we're producing more than potential and the output gap is greater than zero. These are typically periods where more workers than usual have been pulled into a job, often because they've been offered a higher than normal wage. The unemployment rate falls below the natural rate or the employment rate rises above the natural rate. In the other direction, business cycle downturns or contractions. These are periods when we're producing less than potential. The output gap is less than zero. And these are typically periods where more workers than usual have been sidelined, perhaps because they've been laid off for, from their jobs. The unemployment rate rises above the natural rate, or the employment rate falls below the natural rate. But now we're going to expand the concept of potential output. We learn from our Cobb-Douglas pro production function that there is more than one factor of production. In addition to labor, we also use capital to produce our goods and services. Much like labor, we don't always put all of our capital to work. Instead, we'll find that the rate of capital utilization rises and falls with the output gap. Let's give a simple example. Let's suppose a company, your company, has 10 trucks. Now, during normal times, you're not going to use all of those trucks. Some trucks will be sidelined. Let's say two trucks, on average, are there. They're for reserve, for repair, or for normal maintenance. So we say here that the natural rate of capacity utilization is 8 out of 10, or 80%. Now let's suppose that your company has a higher than normal business activity. Things are really booming. In that case, you're going to have to put likely all of your trucks into use. That's going to involve some cost. Each is going to be used probably even more intensively, more miles, and there's going to be more breakdowns and even costlier repairs. 
and your capacity utilization rate in this case, it's full, it's 10 out of 10 or 100%. We rarely get to 100% in real life. In the other direction, let's suppose that you, you're facing lower than normal business activity. Things are kind of slow these days. In that case, you're going to sideline more trucks and you're going to sign more, more, than, more trucks than you really need for repair, maintenance, or reserve, these trucks are going to be essentially doing nothing. So in this case, your capacity utilization rate is lower than the natural rate here. It's 6 out of 10, or 60%. So now let's think about the relationship between the business cycle and capital utilization. Do, when the output gap is zero, normal times, Capacity utilization tends to be at or near its normal or natural rate. During business cycle upturns or expansions, when we're producing more potential, these are typically periods when capital is used more intensively than normal. Capacity utilization rises above its natural level. In the other direction, during business cycle downturns, contractions, when we're producing less than potential, the output gap is less than zero. These are typically periods where capitalize idle, more than normal, unused, capacity utilization falls below its natural level. So we can see here in this diagram, up above here, we have the US output gap and capacity utilization. The capacity utilization is the blue line. The output gap, as computed by the Congressional Budget Office, is the red line. We have the years here. We have percent here. And you can see that these two lines pretty closely correspond. Not totally, but pretty closely. When the output gap goes up, capacity utilization goes up. When the output gap is low, capacity utilization is low. We can also see the same thing for the output gap and the employment rate. So when the output gap goes up, the employment rate goes up. When the output gap goes down, the employment rate goes down. If you want to strengthen these concepts, there's a spreadsheet-based exercise in which you can compute the actual output, potential output, and your computations will be based on employment and capacity utilization rates. So here are your key takeaways from this short video. Full employment output and potential output can be used interchangeably. Output gap is the difference between observed and potential output, often expressed as a percent of potential output. Full employment is never going to be 100%. It's the natural rate of unemployment that reflects the time-intensive and costly process of finding good matches for employees and employers. And, like labor, the intensity of capital utilization, the rate at which we use our capital goods, also changes over the business cycle. Okay, that's it for this video. Take care.